All right, so let's start from the beginning. Today, I actually just wanted to do a product review on the Dudek Warp. I have a few clients that um, are flying the Hadron XX and they want to know how the Dudek Warps, Warp stacks up to the Hadron XX. Is it worthwhile upgrading? What is the difference between the two lighters? And I have about 300 flights on a Dudek Warp since I was one of the first guys to get one. Um, I like the glider because I fly it in cross-country um, uh, for recreational uses, but also I participate in races like the Icarus, and the Dudek Warp for me was just the right fit. So today was all about just uh, making sure that uh, um, I hit the bullet points on what is the difference, what is it all about, and it included me taking off on a day that uh, that isn't ideal. There's is rough weather there's low clouds um, the surface was heating up quite quite a bit the wind was was definitely present and it caused a bit of a rotor uh, along the hills um, on the lee side which is the first time you'll see in the in, in the clip that i'm going on the one side of the mountain and i'm just trying to fly along the valley and really close passes uh, next to the um, um, uh, next to the valley and uh, it's just uh, it's just too much rotor so i go on the opposite side of the hill and this is when I start doing some very fine turns. Now, I've got to say that this has never happened to me before on the, the warp. I've done some low level turns in some rough weather and I've had maybe a bit of a, uh, a wingtip collapse where it got stuck and had to pump it up straight. But having said that, I wasn't flying in normal conditions and I was pushing the limits and uh, it wasn't a spiral. So being in a spiral, there's g-forces involved um, and I could understand why the glider did what. In today's situation, it was a huge surprise for me. Now obviously when you're flying and you're using power attack, now a lot of, a lot of you guys that are watching this video don't know what power attack is. So I'm going to explain what power attack is and then um, you understand how things could go wrong so horribly. Power Attack is a system that you could order with your glider from Dudek and it enhances the racing ability of your glider. So what they initially say is, is it is a manual system to, as you press the speed bar, it will open and close your trimmers. But in reality, you have a setting on your trimmer uh, that is your slow speed or your cruising speed that you would like. So when you're doing slalom racing, you would enter the turn um, at the speed on the set on the trimmer and then when you exit the turn you are going to engage power attack in order to stop yourself from ballooning so it'll use the uh, it'll be initially around the corner it'll be the speed on the trimmer and then as you kick it out it'll be the maximum speed of the glider but that you know it does not work in the same way as um, we would be used to on speed bar. Just normal speed bar pulls the front surface or the front riser of the glider down. It uh, lowers the, the the angle of attack, whereas this actually uses the the, the very much the same element of it, but it uses the same uh, trimmer line to induce that speed up and, and speed down. Now they do warn you. Do not mess around with power attack. You need to know what you're doing. It is a very violent uh, acceleration if you use it um, to speed up. And if you're going to be stomping on it when you're uh, also trying to brake or holding the brakes and stomping on it at the same time, it'll be very much the same as what you get with normal speed bar. But I just reckon it'll be worse. And they're not going to specifically say that, but they do highlight the dangers of that. And this is what happened to me today. I got a little bit cheeky about using this thing. And when I did a couple of tight turns, I was I was starting to do tight turns. It wasn't really aggressive at that point. I was just trying to build up a little. I've got a chase cam right behind me. It's filming me from the behind or filming me from behind. And I'm just, you know, I'm just starting to, to oscillate a bit and getting into it. And I realized that when I, when I was trying to get out of that turn, I engaged the power attack or the speed bar, but I met resistance on the left hand side. That's the one great thing about the power attack is that it does give you feedback. When you stomp on it and one side hooks down or gives you a resistance, you know that if you're going to cross that barrier, you're going to be in a world ahead. You're breaking the rules, and you're you're in you're in the space now where you're taking chances, and that's what happened. I felt that resistance. I went through it, and I didn't realize at that point where my hand was on the braking. The braking on the warp is a 
incredibly sensitive because your braking lines, actually one of your braking lines replaces the tip steering, goes to the tip of the wing. So I was I was on the on the brake and I stomped on the, the, the power attack to get out of that turn, not to balloon, and it collapsed <laughs> very violently. And I was low level. I was not high above the ground. And so it caught me, it caught me um, by surprise, um, caught me off guard. And I got to tell you that at that point, I did not know what happened. I didn't have time to look up and see actually what the glider was doing. By the time, it was probably a second, a second, second and a half before I was able to look up. And between the two cameras that was filming, uh, I think you catch the drift of, of the, the chaos of the situation because... I wasn't flipped 360, I wasn't doing anything weird or whatever else. That's the one great thing about this. Uh, the sensation of what I experienced was pretty much a, just a violent drop. I, it, it shoved me towards the right because it was the right tip that folded in. And I, I dropped, I lost some altitude, but I was also um, off the throttle. And one thing you got to learn or you got to realize and force, force yourself to do is to go through the procedures if you have something like this happen to you. Now, the, the, the fact is, it was such a violent collapse from, that started from the wingtip downwards that I would say that there was more than half of the glider that was folded in and it was not recovering. Um, it, I was stuck in that, but I was flying straight. I wasn't. Uh, I dropped, I flew straight, and I continued on. Um, and I reminded myself, throttle up because you're going down. I'm looking down at the ground and I'm realizing this might be it. I might be buying the farm today. So um, at that point, I, uh, I throttled up. I kept the speed up. The glider was flying straight, and I was just pumping like mad. I was looking up at the glider, the wingtip that was folded down. I was pumping, pumping violently, and I could see it was, in, it was, it was opening up more and more and more, and eventually it opened up completely. Um, all right, so what do we take away from this? What do I take away from this especially? is the fact that you've got to be extremely cautious about using advanced systems like the power attack. Number two, there are so much stories out there with people like Del Shansi, etc., just calling these reflex things death tap, hoax flexes and death traps and whatever else. This is the, the second time something like this has happened to me, and I'm happy to report that this thing flies straight. I'm, not all reflex gliders are made equally, uh, brands and whatever else. Some are cheap, some are expensive. This is obviously one of the most expensive reflex gliders out there, full reflex. Um, but still, categorically, look at the footage and understand that the glider is flying straight. I'm not being flipped 360. I'm not going head over ass. Speaking of ass, you know, I definitely had to change my shorts after that one. That was... I was happy, but it doesn't mean that I wasn't uh, thinking about getting on the ground quick, you know what I'm saying. So the, the point is, is the glider was flying straight, it was controllable. If, if it, at the point when I throttled up, I was flying straight, I can control it. I could give a little bit on the left brake to make sure that it doesn't keep on um, turning towards the right, now with the right being collapsed and all. And a couple of island pumps, probably took about three, four seconds for, for me to get that back, um, to get the wing back to where it should be and it was level flight back to normal again. So, f my five cents worth, you know, it might have been a very dangerous situation that I caught myself in because I was doing this at low level. That's one caution. When you start, when you do aerobatics, it's always fun doing at low level, but you, re you need to realize that if things go wrong, it's not far down to, uh, to uh, hitting the ground. So that is something that you gotta keep uh, perspective on at all times and it was really too close for comfort today um, when when I um, when I failed to engage throttle again and I came out of that the GoPro doesn't really give you the depth because it's a mountainside leading down but I was probably about 15 to 25 feet above the ground when I got that out of its uh, situation and we'll have a look at the telemetry I'm hopefully I can put some of that telemetry on the video I'm hoping it has it all right so that was the one thing was the altitude. Second thing is, don't pay attention to all the other crap uh, that you hear about reflex being a bad thing. Um, the glider did what it had to. It was uh, a rough situation that was induced by the pilot and it flew straight and I pumped it the right way. So it's really good to do something like a sport license or an SIV. If you can do that, if you can get out to do that, then you'll learn to control these kinds of situations. The worst thing a pilot could have done, the worst thing I could have done today, is if I just hit a blank and I didn't try and correct the wing by pumping it back into place, the wing tip back into place. If I didn't do that, um, 
I could possibly have fallen to the ground. I could have possibly have floated eventually into the ground because you automatic, automatically have a turn towards um, the site that's collapsed. So even though it, when I say it flies straight, it means it's not violently throwing me in different directions. Um, it's not going into a spiral. It'll fly straight as long as you keep the brake on the opposite side, which is what you learn when you do a sport license. Uh, and then you've just got to correct it manually. Uh, if I didn't do that, yeah, obviously, you know, a beginner, newbie starting this sport, maybe they don't get to the thinking process to do that quick enough. Um, but then a newbie wouldn't be ordering a power attack onto his glider as an option. Right. Third thing... I think it's always good to have someone on the field or someone close by that could react to it. I had another student pilot on the field, he was the only guy here, and he could hear me hollering uh, from quite a distance away, because I really did shit myself, um, and um, he thought I was just having fun. But if I failed to return and I crash landed in the bush with a parachute landing, it was something out of control, at least there would have been some form of recovery. Even if I would lie there with a broken back for hours on end, I might, with a serious injury bleeding out, always good to have someone on the field. So that's the three takeaways. Beautiful. So what you're going to do with the power attack is you're going to select the point where it slows, it's, it's got a slow speed, but when you're going to push the power attack it's going to open it all the way up. So you're coming around the corner, then you release the speed by automatically goes to that speed setting on your trimmer. So here yeah, I'm doing a tight turn, a tight turn, I want to get out of the turn and I go power attack and whoa! Fuck me! Woo! Ah, ha, ha, ha. I survived it! <laughs> That's never happened to me before! What the hell? Alright, this is why it happened. Never, ever, had bike pressure on the brake toggle while well, you're on speed bar. You do that, you get a collapse. Now for the word of wisdom, I am going to be choosing another very wise thing to do, and it is to land now. Yes, I am going to land and get some new underwear.